Welcome everybody, uh, Coach Kenny with a follow-up, Rabdo Part 2 with our good friend Yami Takanen. Yami is currently in town uh, coaching uh, many of the world's best CrossFitters. He's been a longtime coach um, of the world's best CrossFitters and functional fitness athletes. Uh, he's got his own training program that uh, several hundred people follow all around the globe called the Training Plan. And odds are you've seen him floating around the gym over the last few years. Uh, lastly, sometimes I get my silly, ridiculous ideas from this colleague from overseas. Now, um, as we reported uh, last month, John Cannon uh, very scarily contracted rab rhabdo dur during MRF. Now, this is something that is uh, serious to all, um, no matter what level athlete. Typically, people that are most subject to uh, get rhabdo are people who were formerly fit, they know what fitness feels like, and they come in and they start exercising really hard, and they might be dehydrated, um, amongst a, a couple other factors. But John Cannon was somebody who was a very fit, very conscientious, very mindful, the quintessential mindful athlete who usually kept himself within his thresholds. But um, we've seen this uh, with extreme athletes as well, the, the world's best crossfitters. Last year during Murph at the CrossFit Games, Yami, you had several athletes that had rhabdo as well, and some other athletes have got rhabdo through the years. Go, can you tell our... Uh... Yeah, so I think my first kind of in-person experience with rhabdo, 2013 at the regionals, um, athlete I wasn't working with at the time, Lucas Hoberry. Um, very experienced athlete, high level, CrossFit Games athlete, now third year in a row. Did not qualify that year because of Rapto. Um, did two events in a row that kind of caused it. One was very high repetition, pistols followed by dumbbells and power snatches. Destroyed the field in that workout. Felt a little bad, came to the deadlift box jump workout. Did not feel very good, passed out backstage, etc. And then we found out he had Rapto. He had to take two, three months off. So it was maybe a more severe case. And then we actually did have the Murph related rhabdo um, last year. Although it was more last year was more a case of maybe a minor rhabdo and more of a heat injury. Right. And these two things kind of go oftentimes together when we look at the exercise related. Let me pause rhabdo. you for a sec. So if we look at Memorial Day Murph, it was a little hot around here, and we're literally talking about the fittest, not people who are exceptionally fit the fittest people in the world uh, last year getting minor minor rhabdo with a little bit of uh, heat exhaustion slash injury. So these are um, these are things to be mindful of as we train in the heat. We're not an air conditioned facility, almost no location in Southern California is. And there will be some summer months and some summer training sessions where we need, just need to be uh, aware. So uh, keep going. So I had to yeah, yeah, I mean some of the things that you can start to think about to avoid rhabdo, prevent it, so you want to be well hydrated, not just water, but some electrolytes, putting some sea salt in your water, for example, or salting up your uh, watermelons or kind of watery vegetables and fruits can be very useful. So make sure you come in well hydrated, well slept, so you're not exhausted when you come in. Heat management overall, I mean, if you guys are training here, so you might be more acclimatized than we are. We are actually going through protocols where the athletes finish a workout straight into sauna, and they're going to hang in there after 30 minutes to develop that capacity. Preparing Scandinavians. That's yeah, what, that's yeah we are very uh, <laughs> fair-skinned, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so coming well hydrated, manage the heat. Uh, one of the things, I know you guys are now talking about breathing. One of the things that helps you manage breathe, uh, the heat is breathing. Mm -hmm. Because of course you can get some of that heat out, but you can also manage your CO2 levels. Right. So when you start to be at high heart rate and you start to and start to freak out maybe a little bit and you're exerting at high intensity, that combined shock. Because when we talk about rhabdo, we don't just want to look at the tissue level, injury, your muscles get damaged, you have myoglobin release that can be harmful for your kidneys, but we're looking at the higher senses as well, the heat exhaustion from the brain perspective. That lack of air leads to panic, leads us to make bad decisions right. in the heat and we might be pushing ourselves way further than we need to. So staying in control, even in those workouts like Murph, where you really want to push because it's a special workout. Right. Um, that can be also a very, very important piece of the puzzle. And again, I think one of the big learning lessons that we got last month was, um, you know, if you've got a high volume workout, you see a high volume workout on a hot day and maybe you're a little bit uh, behind in your dehydration, um, something to, to, to be aware of is not to PR. Um, right away in your first uh, unbroken set of, in this particular case, pull-ups. But mm. 
Um, breaking your sets into manageable sequences is something that can also be something that is, is helpful to the athlete. Um, we, you just talked about myoglobin getting released into the blood. Let's just do a very brief 101 on what rhabdo is because we're kind of talking about it, how it's affected somebody here, how it's affected some of the top crossfitters in the world. But um, yeah, I mean, in, in about a minute, what, what is rhabdo? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really an issue where we see a challenge for the kidneys as a systemic effect, and that's really happening mainly due to muscle damage. So we see this in um, trauma victims, for example, crush injuries, and then sometimes it's exercise related where you have a lot of eccentric muscle contractions, so that negative contraction, you're resisting a force, and that tends to lead to excessive muscle damage if done at high repetitions, dehydrated, high heat, etc., which releases that protein called myoglobin into your circulation, and it's the breakdown product of that myoglobin that actually can be harmful for your kidneys. Easy way to think about it is that your kidneys are a sieve, and they try to filter the fluids in the body, the blood, and then what well, the fluids in the body, and what happens is that you have these molecules that are too big getting into the kidneys, and they can wreak havoc, basically breaking that sieve, so to speak, and that's when we start to see the dark urine coming in because there's a little bit of blood in there. You have to have decreased urination because you're trying to the system is trying to recuperate and that was from that damage that was what uh, John Cannon figured out was the dark urine was that was sort of the, the the straw that broke the camel's back and so again what we're, what we're what we believe to be the case was all that eccentric loading so mm. he was coming down hard from the pull-ups rep after rep and again the eccentric this so there's two elements to human movement there's the eccentric quality and the concentric qualities and typically what Yami is saying is on the eccentric or that lengthening phase um, is where we're most susceptible and typically it's on high volume things it's not that high volume things are bad inherently they're not but we do need to be mindful on uh, moving on and again um, you know the, the good news is that John Cannon will be working out with us uh, anytime this week so that's uh, rather exciting for our particular gym and I know it's something uh, in the coming weeks you're going to be uh, very aware of at the CrossFit Games. Yeah absolutely with the Murph showing up again and, and I have to say I mean with Lucas he since he had Rapdo he's now competed at the CrossFit Games this is going to be the third year in a row so yes you can come back you can come back stronger right. and better from that right and that's a that's a great example uh lucas you might uh have remembered he came last summer and trained with us in eight pies uh midsummer and he might be uh coming in to do a couple special pie eating uh workouts with us if not we're going to be cheering for lucas and all of our favorite europeans uh again yami's uh, coach to annie thor's daughter amongst many others Bjorkman, who placed third on the male side last year. Uh, you're kind of like the stepbrotherly coach to Um And what are some of the other Europeans? Lucas Hogberg. We say Hogberg. He says... Hogberg. Hogberg. Um, just a difference in pronunciation. Uh, and we got the uh, Australian Mitchell Cinnamon. And Mitchell. Is there as well. Nobody knows what he's saying. And, 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 and Mitchell as, as well from Australia. So we got some foreigners that we're going to be cheering for via uh, Super Coach Yami Yami. Thank, thank you for uh, stopping in this month with the Chalk Bucket, uh, John Cannon. Everybody here at the gym is stoked to have you back. And Yami, good luck at the CrossFit Games. All of us here and CrossFit Land will be cheering for you. Thank you. Thanks.